Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. There was no work, or certainly it wasn't work as usual today for many Bear County residents as businesses were shut down and people were told to stay home. The city and county stay home work safe orders have been in place since midnight. Garrett Berger has been looking at the new restrictions and how the city and county are enforcing them. He joins us live from the north side. And Garrett, do we know if people are following these new orders? Well, it's hard to stay for sure. Now, anecdotally, we have seen clearer streets, less traffic, and obviously clearer parking lots. Though you can also see there are still people out and about thanks to various exemptions within the orders. And we have heard reports of both the city and the county having reported violations, though no citations have been issued as of yet. So far, it's just been warnings. So what are the rules anyways? Now, under the orders, you can still leave your house for crucial errands, like getting groceries or medical supplies, but that even extends to exercising outside. You just need to be far enough away from other people. And there's a long list of businesses that are exempted from closing. So we've been seeing people out and quite out and about at quite a few still open businesses. Now, both the city and county have indicated law enforcement is not going to be out actively looking for people breaking the orders. They're not going to pull you over and ask for papers. While in KSAT studios yesterday, Mayor Ron Nuremberg said it's on everyone to make sure life can go back to normal as quickly as possible. We're relying on people's uh, good sense that unless we work together to you know, obey this order and, and, and limit interaction and exposure as much as possible, we're going to be dealing with the pain of these kinds of restrictions for a long, long time. As we said, law enforcement isn't going to be pulling you over, but they will be looking into any complaints people send in with a focus on businesses that aren't obeying the directions to shut down. So if you're worried about a potential violation, you can give SAPD a B or BCSO a call, depending on where you live in the county. If you're in the city, call SAPD. Anywhere else, call BCSO. Their non-emergency numbers are on your screen right now. Now, there are penalties for breaking these orders. Under the In the city, you could face a fine of up to $2,000. And in the county's orders, they have penalties of up to a $1,000 fine or even six months in jail. But right now, city and county officials stressing that they are just asking for people's compliance and hoping for it. Live on the north side, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. San Antonio having its first day of the stay home work safe order as people in New Braunfels get prepared to go under that community's version of the order. It takes effect tonight at 1159. Mayor Baron Castile made the announcement yesterday. All non-essential businesses are being ordered to close their doors. And like the Alamo City, there are many exemptions to that order. Restaurants for carry out or delivery, banks, insurance companies, medical facilities, grocery stores and other necessary businesses can remain open. Locals are asked to stay home and work from home if possible and only go out when it's necessary. For information on what's included and excluded in the order, check out the City of New Braunfels Facebook page or KSAT.com. This is something that I wish on no one. Those are the words of a New York City corrections officer sharing his experience battling the coronavirus. Nine days in, he says he is still experiencing bouts of dizziness, shortness of breath, extreme body aches, and what feels like a drug-induced head rush. That man happens to be related to our Devin Clark, who shares his story. Yo, I used to be 250, I'm now 217. The New York City corrections officer in his 30s says for over a week now, he's been experiencing a sickness like no other. I felt like my throat like my lungs, everything had like tightened up. Charles says it all started with fatigue at work. I felt so tired, I couldn't stay up in the training. He believes he contracted the coronavirus days or maybe weeks prior at his job inside the Rikers Island Jail. Being an officer, Charles was prioritized and given the COVID-19 test, which came back positive. My spine feels like, like it's broken, you know, like my whole body is in excruciating pain. Perhaps the most unusual symptom. It almost feels like like a high feeling. Charles adds he's experienced lucid dreams and hallucinations. Though his mother wasn't tested, days after he got sick, so did she, now experiencing the same symptoms. It makes you feel like you want to lay down, but the, the more you lay down, I guess the sicker you get. 
Charles says at least two of his co-workers have already died from COVID-19. Aside from concerns for his sick mother in her 60s, one of the hardest parts is being forced to avoid his two young sons. I'm very attached to my kids. While he prays for recovery, he's sending a message to the world. Stay away from people. Don't hug. Don't handshake. Just let this thing blow over. Please, it's, it's serious. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. As a result of food shortages and health guidelines, the San Antonio Food Bank is making changes to the way food is distributed to nonprofit organizations. It says it must now be more strategic and thoughtful in order to continue making sure people in need in San Antonio and South Texas have the food they need. The move comes after this massive food giveaway Monday at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall that was shut down by the Balcones Heights police chief. He cited a violation of the governor's social distancing rules, but there were also issues of virus containment since some volunteers were not wearing masks and gloves. Last night, the food bank notified all its nonprofit partners that it will no longer be participating in mobile food distribution. But here's what they're offering us, that we can go to the warehouse and purchase food that they have in there and then take it back to our food pantries. And we can still operate out of our food pantries. It'll be a noticeable difference, however, since a one day food distribution will serve some 2000 people, whereas a pantry can only serve about 200 people a day. The food bank is asking nonprofits to register their clients to take part in new county mega site distributions that will begin next week. The drive just wrapped up at six, but all day long, UT Health San Antonio has been collecting as much personal protective gear as possible to be given to health care providers. Everything from face masks, including N95 respirators, surgical masks, and masks used by painters, carpenters, or hobbyists, to unused medical or disposable gloves, eye protection goggles, face shields, and thermometers. It's interesting. It's been everything from um, folks driving by with something from their home to businesses really uh, looking at what they have in their cabinets and in their inventory. And if they don't need it right now, they're able to, to make that available to us. So we've had uh, companies come by that have N95 masks because of the nature of the work they do. And we're able to uh, set those aside should we need them. It's great that the community is heeding the call. UT Health San Antonio wants to reassure the community this donation drive did not come about because there's a shortage of supplies currently. This drive all about getting prepared should there be a need for extra supplies in the future. And families across San Antonio have a new supply of diapers today as well. It's all thanks to a new life for a new generation diaper drive. Parents of expectant mothers get a chance to pick up a pack of 20 diapers. All the diapers given out today were taken in by donation. There is no income limit to receive the diapers. All they had to show was paperwork and they were out the door with new diapers. All you need is your ID and then child birth certificate or verification of birth facts. If you're pregnant, um, all you need is proof of pregnancy. A new life for a new generation also gives away other baby materials like wipes and formula. This diaper drive has been going on since 2004. New at 6, the coronavirus outbreak forcing a lot of businesses to close. And for the businesses that remain open, they're having to operate much differently, like local veterinary clinics that are still seeing pets. Stephanie Cerna talked with the veterinarian at the Northern Oaks Bird and Animal Hospital about how they're working to treat pets while still keeping pet owners safe. Retrieving pets from SUVs and cars and consulting pet owners right outside their vehicle windows. It's the new normal for the staff at the Northern Oaks Bird and Animal Hospital. So at this point, we are providing valet service for all of the pets. We um, have no clients in the building because we're trying to maintain our safe social distance. In order to stay open, we want to be as safe as we can for both our clients and for ourselves so that we can stay open and, and remain healthy for everyone. The staff also deep cleaning every 45 minutes. We've divided ourselves into two teams so we are not overlapping so in case anybody gets sick on one team then we can still work the other team um, so our teams are not overlapping at all and you can see the signs on the door instructing people to stay in their vehicles and call the office when they get here and the pet owners we talked to today say they're okay with that this is why I like this protocol because we're, we're protecting her 
because if we don't protect her, we're not, we're not going to have our pets taken care of. So this is awesome. Love it. I mean, this is the, the best thing to do. I mean, we love her. She's awesome. All right. The doctor will call you shortly. Barbara Biscato says she's so glad Dr. Bird could see her dog, Bella Vita, today. I just know she's well taken care of and I don't even have to be there. You know, and that's very important to me. We're still trying to take care of everybody's pets because the worst thing that happens in a health crisis is to let pets also suffer and then clients have their emotional suffering that goes along with it. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. KSAT and KSAT.com, the place to go to get the very latest on the coronavirus crisis, the latest information on confirmed cases in our area, the effort to flatten the curve by local and state leaders through social distancing, and all the stories from our newscast and our digital team covering this outbreak. It's also the place to find our digital only newscast KSAT's news at nine. It's right on the home page at KSAT.com. Have a bit of breaking news on time saver traffic. Actually an accident. This is I-10 in Hebner. You can see I-10, not a lot of cars there, but there is a multi vehicle accident. I-10 in Hebner. I believe this is the eastbound lanes, the access road there uh, at I-10 in Hebner, but you can see Lanes are still open, but at least two or three closed down at this hour. Turning now to weather, let's take a live look outside with live cam 86 degrees out there, Adam. And boy, was it a warm one out there today. Yeah, definitely warm out there yeah. today. I'll be honest, though, not as hot as we anticipated because the humidity came back in so swiftly and quickly today. No change in the aquifer. We're still 3.3 feet above average for this time of year. And as for your pollen count, oak is way up there. It skyrocketed today. At over 6,800, it's high. Mold moderate, 750, mulberry and hackberry on the low end. We're in the 80s right now. 86 Port SA, 88 in Bulverde, Floresville, you're at 86. The cold front is just around the corner. We'll talk about that coming up. With more people staying home, food trucks are hurting for business. We'll tell you how they're getting by tonight. No, at six, you might have stocked up on chicken noodle soup and toilet paper during the COVID-19 outbreak, but how's your virus medical kit looking? Hospitals and doctor's offices are trying to limit the number of visits by those who are not urgent, urgently ill, so you may want to have what you need on hand. Ursula Perry has a shopping list from the doctor. The store shelves may be clear of paper goods and pasta, but the pharmacy is still ready for your business. Emergency room doctors are busy. They're screening patients for COVID-19. So it's a good idea to be ready to take care of yourself and your family at home. We're talking about general sort of like bandages, something to clean a wound with, like hydrogen peroxide and antibiotic ointment. Um, actually, the Ready uh, South Texas app, if you go and put your family information in, we'll give you a customized shopping list for your um, first aid kit. Beyond the basic Band-Aids and Tylenol, the next concern is if you have COVID-19-like symptoms. They will likely be mild, but they're still a worry. Emergency room doctors recommend some essentials, throat lozenges like Sepacol. The red ones have benzocaine for numbing the throat. Tylenol PM cough syrup, as well as some sort of nasal spray. If you have small children in your house, the list changes a bit, according to pediatrician Elizabeth Hansen at UT Health. Some kind of throat lozenge is good. Um, again, it depends a lot on the age. Somebody like uh, if they're old enough not to choke, so over about three or four years old, you can use like a Halls or Ricola or any kind of soothing throat lozenge would be fine. Um, I said tea and honey work pretty well. Your at-home medical kit should include everything you need for about a month for things like high blood pressure and diabetes, those daily medications. But also, if you suffer from severe reactions to insect bites, you'll need that medicine as well. Keep in mind, if you need immediate medical attention, you can always call your doctor first and get a telemedicine appointment. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, foggy start turned into a sunny afternoon. I really liked today. I loved, did, I thought it was right. a perfect temperature, Adam. Well, and it was so nice, especially this morning through the midday. It felt great out because we had a lack of humidity then, but it really surged back into place and we we're feeling the mugginess out there right now. And it was rather pleasant for the day today. All right, let's take a look at our weather headlines. We have some things to talk about, including some changes coming our way. First morning fog. It's a trend and it's going to continue for the next couple of days. 
Then a cold front hits Saturday morning. That's going to sweep away the humidity and give us just a slight chance of rain. Unfortunately, not a great shot at rainfall, but we did pretty well over the weekend. And tomorrow we will have the updated drought monitor to share with you, and I'll compare it to the previous one to see what kind of difference we have. 87, that was our high temperature today, well above the average of 76. So it was honestly a little bit cooler than what we anticipated, partially because of that morning fog that moved in. Gave, gave us a few hours less of real good sunshine to warm us up and the increase in the humidity as well. Del Rio's at 98, 92 in Uvalde, Carrizo Springs 91, and we also have the mugginess in the air. So there's that humidity. Southeasterly breeze has our dew points back into the 60s around town. So yeah, we're muggy. We notice it. It's just not at the oppressive levels yet. We are going to see a drop in the humidity into the weekend. I mentioned that Friday or that Friday night slash early Saturday morning cold front. That's going to sweep away the humidity for Saturday and Sunday. So this weekend I think will feel fantastic and be actually rather crisp outside for part of the weekend. Quiet weather across the whole state and you will notice that the cloud trajectory here from Baja Peninsula through New Mexico. It's this big arcing flow aloft and that's because of our overall weather pattern. First, we've got this little disturbance that's over the Pacific Northwest. A lot of good moisture with it. Sometimes they drop into town and give us some of that moisture. It's going to influence our weather, but not all that significantly rain wise. But here's a big upper level high, the big blue H it's back. It's centered just south of us and that's giving this overall a trajectory of the clouds kind of arcing up and over Texas and keeping us very clear and sunny, especially for the afternoon hours. That's the kind of pattern we're in. It's also keeping us warm as well, about 10 degrees above average for this time of year. Then that disturbance drops in from the Pacific Northwest. Now, as it crosses over the Rocky Mountains, it's going to spin up a low pressure system at the surface, develop a cold front and push that cold front through early Saturday morning. So as our pattern shifts into the weekend, we'll see those temperatures fall off. I just don't see what a really good chance of any appreciable rainfall with this pattern change. So here's the breakdown for the evening. Clear skies to start, then increasing clouds after 10, 11 p.m. and becoming foggy after midnight. So after midnight, the fog's going to settle in and you'll notice it tomorrow morning. Humid as well. Temperatures falling down into the mid 70s by 10 p.m. near 70 at midnight, 66 tomorrow morning. So a comfortable start to the day. You'll just have to deal with the morning fog if you're venturing out. If you're going outside to get that bike ride in, go for a walk. Remember, that's OK. It's OK to go outside, go for a walk. Just maintain social distance. 80 degrees by noon, sunny and 88 in the afternoon. And you'll notice the humidity with the southeasterly breeze. Friday, not all that different. I just think the morning fog and clouds will be a little more stubborn and hard to break up. So I'm thinking a little more gray than blue when you average it out over the day. And then there's that slight chance of rain 20% early Saturday morning. Otherwise, Saturday looking great. Sunny right near 80, lower humidity. And then Monday, we could have a few storms pop up. Uh, but right now, it doesn't look like it'd be all that uh, widespread, mainly just isolated in nature. But look at those temperatures. Back down to highs in the 70s Sunday and Monday and mornings in the 50s. There we go. We're going to even this out a little bit. It's a good looking forecast. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much, Adam. All right. He's from one of the countries that's been hardest hit by the coronavirus. So it's always interesting, Larry, when we get a chance to hear from Marco Bellinelli. Yeah, and definitely he's obviously worried about his family and friends, just his country itself over there in Italy. But here in town, Marco Bellinelli is pretty much self-quarantined at home, and he's really praising the Spurs staff for keeping the players going. And the Dallas Cowboys are adding more defensive help. Coming up. The Spurs have missed seven games after the NBA suspended play because of the coronavirus pandemic. They would have played last night at Utah in a key Western Conference matchup. Instead, the Spurs are pretty much stuck at home, like many others, all while trying to work out and stay in shape should the regular season resume. Shooting guard Marco Bellinelli talked with Eurohoops and said he's been living in quarantine for two weeks now and that the Spurs staff is doing a great job. And here's what he said, quote, I'm going out to only take my dog for a walk. We do our grocery shopping online and I'm working out at home. I want to also thank the Spurs staff that is absolutely present and ready to accommodate our every need by bringing us food and all the necessary tools to continue our sports routine as much as possible, end quote.
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. And more defensive help is on the way for the Dallas Cowboys, who have agreed to basic terms on a deal with free agent defensive tackle Don Terry Poe, as reported by multiple outlets. Those reports say both sides are finalizing the language on the deal, but it will get done. Poe was drafted number 11 overall in 2012 by the Kansas City Chiefs. He's also played, he's also played for Atlanta and most recently Carolina. He's made 118 defensive starts in his career, and he's also rushed, caught, and thrown a touchdown each during his pro career. The boys also agreed to a one-year deal with blocking tight end Blake Bell. Like countless other athletes, Green Bay Packers linebacker Ty Summers is doing his best to stay safe and work out during the COVID-19 outbreak. The former Reagan High School quarterback turned college linebacker TCU played in every game during his rookie season and helped the Packers advance to the NFC Championship. Summers played at Soldier Field, AT&T Stadium, Arrowhead Stadium, and Lambeau Field this season. Some cool spots for sure, and says his rookie campaign was pretty sweet. I mean, it was crazy. It was it was long. Yeah, I will say, because, I mean, playing, I think we played 22 games, I think, including preseason. Yeah. I want to say, yeah, 22 games. And so that was double anything that I'd ever played previously, you know, college or high school. And so that was that was one thing. But I feel like there was such a cool experience getting to go into those different stadiums, mm -hmm. thinking players that I've watched on TV, heck, I've played with on video games. Summers played 311 snaps on special teams, according to Football Reference. And with the Packers losing some linebackers to free agency, Ty hopes to challenge for a starting job next season. And Carnivore football was fortunate to get in some spring ball ahead of COVID-19 shutting sports down. Other college football teams, not so lucky. Head coach Eric Morris says the Cardinals got in eight practices before all activities came to a halt. Entering his third season with the Cardinals, the shutdown doesn't affect Morris like a first-year head coach, but still, is he using FaceTime or video conferencing to help teach his student athletes? We're not yet. Um, could get to the point, we've talked about it, you know, getting on some yeah. Zoom and some things of that nature. Um, really, this is the first week that they're back in school, so we want them to focus solely on school. I mean, it's such a unique um, way to go about during the middle of, 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 of the semester, changing it up and, and going remote. So first and foremost, they're student athletes, they're students first. So we want them to be able to pass the grade so they'll be eligible next year. And check this out. Former Wagner quarterback Tobias Weaver tweeted he's blessed to have received a preferred walk on from Incarnate Word. He is one heck of an athlete, that's for sure. And that was our FaceTime interview with Coach just right down the road at the campus. Yeah, I like it. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. This is a part of the show where we like to ask some questions of some experts really in the field. And I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. David Good from the Texas Med Clinic. And we're going to talk a lot about testing and the availability of tests and uh, Texas Med Clinic making some news on that front today. Dr. Good. Um, yes, the announcement we're making is that the pipeline has started to open uh, while testing is still not readily available. Uh, we do, uh, for the moment, have a steady supply of tests. We started testing really this past Friday. Our uh, lab partner, Quest, opened up a testing facility or opened their testing facility in Dallas with the capability of doing testing for the COVID-19. Uh, we've been sending specimens um, starting Friday and Saturday. Um, they've been uh, promising a 48-hour turnaround and up to now have been delivering in less time than that. We've done, as of yesterday, uh, just under 200 tests. We don't have all of those results back, uh, but we have sent 200 tests out and have the capability at all of our facilities for the individuals who meet the criteria as defined for Metro Health uh, to provide them with the test. How hard was this to accomplish? <laughs> um, we fortunately have a good relationship with Quest. Uh, we've participated in a couple of different ways uh, with Metro Health. Uh, we were just able to open up a, a better dialogue, I think a better conversation with Quest uh, and get the supplies that were needed in order to be able to do the testing. I mean, the big limitation for us has been getting the kit itself, first of all, to have the supplies to be able to collect the specimen. Uh, and then secondly, them having the capabilities. 
as I said, it was only this past Friday uh, that they opened their lab in Dallas to testing. Prior to that, uh, the only place Quest was able to test was California. I can tell you we had the experience of sending tests prior to Friday. So early last week, we sent a few tests. And to my knowledge, we still have some of those tests waiting in the pipeline to get tested at the facility in California just because they're so backlogged from the number of tests they have there. Now, I want to be clear, just because you have them doesn't mean anybody can just walk into a Texas Med Clinic and get a COVID-19 test, correct? That's correct. I mean, we have them, but it's still a limited number. The pipeline is not flowing freely at this point. Um, so we are following the Metro Health guidelines uh, for who gets tested. We're also uh, normally uh, doing a rapid strep and a rapid flu uh, before we uh, do the COVID test. And only if those are negative uh, would we proceed with doing the COVID test, assuming the person is a candidate for testing according to the guidelines. Now, this isn't just as simple as, okay, you get the tests in, you've got Quest set up to do the results. You also have to do some preparing of your staff just with equipment, if nothing else, correct? Correct. Uh, we have to be wearing personal protective equipment in order, you know, really to treat patients. Right now, uh, we've changed our procedures so that we're trying to keep patients from gathering in the lobby. We're trying to limit it to one patient in the lobby at a time. No one's sitting in the lobby. We're trying to get people into rooms immediately so we can take care of processing all of their paperwork. And we're asking patients to wait in their cars if necessary or outside to queue up out there before they come into the clinic. Um, but then we are, um, when we're working with patients, are wearing personal protective equipment. Um, Texas Med Clinic has been preparing for some type of pandemic for about 10 years now. We believe we have a sufficient supply of personal protective equipment to be able to offer this service to our communities for months to come. There are a lot of people that have been frustrated with the amount of testing that's out there. And a lot of people will even say there wouldn't be the need to shelter at home or stay home work safe type things like San Antonio and Bear County are doing if we had enough tests. Do you share that frustration? Um, I'm focused on trying to get the problem solved that I can get solved and getting more, you know, I'm trying to get the tests I can get for the San Antonio community and Austin and New Braunfels and all the areas that we are uh, and focus on getting, you know, getting those services delivered to people. Um, that's, that's outside of the scope and I've got enough things to worry about. So uh, to be honest, I don't have time to be worried or frustrated about things that I can't do anything about. And that would be an example of something I can't do anything about. Yeah. Final question for you. A lot of medical clinics and hospitals are concerned about the number of supplies they have, whether it's masks or gloves or the protective personal equipment that you've been talking about. Is that a concern for you? Not at this time. We, As I said earlier, we've been preparing for a pandemic like this. Uh, we've known it's inevitable that it's gonna come, um, you know, after 9-11 in 2001, I believe it was. And then after the H1N1 pandemic of 2009, uh, we took those as serious events. We're fortunate our founder, uh, you know, was very concerned about how, uh, how we would interface with the community during these pandemics and felt like we as an organization needed to be prepared. So when it comes to the equipment that we need to take care of patients, uh, we believe we can do what we've always done which is to provide urgent care services in San Antonio and South and Central Texas. Dr. David Good with Texas Med Clinic, thank you very much for joining us for this coronavirus Q&A. You're welcome, sir. We'll be right back. If you want to avoid getting sick or spreading germs, you're constantly told to wash your hands or slather on the hand sanitizer. But how do these methods actually kill germs? Courtney Friedman explains. Washing our hands with soap and water is one of the most important things we can do right now to help stop the spread of coronavirus, the flu, and other illnesses. And it does that by breaking down the cells of the virus itself. Underneath the spiky outside of the coronavirus are the outer layers of cells made up of lipids or fats. When you wash dishes covered in fats like grease or butter with only water, nothing happens. The same thing happens to the virus germs. But add soap and the grease, or in this case, the lipid layer, 
breaks down, and that means it cannot bind to your skin. Then when you rinse your hands at the end, it washes the virus off. To be completely effective, make sure you're really scrubbing with soap, building up bubbles and getting all parts of your hands and under your nails for 20 seconds. If you're out and about, hand sanitizer with 60% alcohol can be used to sanitize your hands as well. But just like with traditional washing, you really need to rub the sanitizer all over your hands. And while it kills the virus, it's not rinsing it off like with water. So if your hands are extra dirty, it's going to take a lot more sanitizer to clean them. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Take a live look outside with live cam this evening. 86 degrees out there. Adam. Yeah, 86. It, we're feeling the warmth, uh, unseasonably warm for this time of year. And you can see that bit of haze over the sky. And, you know, we will see some changes as we get into the upcoming weekend. But uneventful this evening. That's the nice thing. It's going to be pretty calm out there. 86 now by 8 p.m. lower 80s, 10 p.m. 77 but expect some fog to develop later on tonight. And we'll talk about that new trend of morning fog along with our next cold front coming up in a few minutes. Well, there's a lot of buzz about ways to stay connected while social distancing due to the coronavirus. Instagram has rolled out a new feature in the United States called co-watching. Yeah, to access it, users participating in a video chat on Instagram should see a photo icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. If you tap on that, you should be able to share with the group Instagram photos, videos and posts. Instagram told Business Insider it sped up the launch of co-watching in order to meet the growing demand for virtual connections with friends and family. Makes sense. The outbreak is a big threat to a lot of independent restaurants and businesses. They've either had to close or cut hours of, and staff due to social distancing. But the Yelp Foundation and GoFundMe have teamed up to give people a chance to help them stay afloat. They've made it easy for these businesses to fundraise and get donations. Yeah, the fundraisers will automatically appear on the business's Yelp page. Users just need to click on donate to give them some money. Yelp and GoFundMe will match up to a million dollars in these donations. And some not so good news for all the little monsters out there waiting for the release of Lady Gaga's new album in April. The pop star is delaying it due to the coronavirus outbreak. Chromatica was set for an April 10th release, but Gaga says it just doesn't feel right to release the album with everything that's happening in the world. Yeah, on social media, she acknowledged that she knows her fans are disappointed, probably angry and sad, but she asked them to practice kindness. She hopes to announce a new album release date soon. Gaga also revealed she had planned to do a surprise set at Coachella in April. That festival was postponed, postponed though, until October. And it looks like Popeyes is trying to get in on the Netflix and chill trend. The chicken chain kicked off its own campaign this week called Fried Chicken and Chill. In a Twitter response, Popeyes told its followers to tweet photos of their family eating a Popeyes meal. Yeah, the restaurant said it would give its Netflix username and password to the first thousand people who did it. Followers had to tweet to Popeyes Twitter account using the hashtag that password from Popeyes. I feel like Popeyes is always doing a little social media. They're kind of a cutting edge. Yeah. yeah, they seem a little cutting mm. edge. Anyway, turning now to weather, 86 degrees out there. As Adam mentioned, kind of hazy, but all in all, a beautiful day. Yeah, beautiful day. It's just, you know, if you're susceptible to the oak pollen, it's way yeah. up right now. It's at a count of over like 6,000. It's just, it's one of the highest counts we've seen so far this year, and it's really peaking out. And that's average for this uh, for our oak season is late March, early April is usually when we hit our peak and well, we've hit our stride there. It's feeling a little spring in some places summer like Laredo 97 feeling summer like around here. Definitely feeling spring like you look at Midland 91, Abilene 90, the whole state generally 80s and 90s and as is often the case, Del Rio and Laredo, some of the warmest spots across the Lone Star State. 86 here in San Antonio, but we're also feeling the humidity. The humidity's back. It came in pretty quickly earlier today, and so dew points are back into the 60s for most of us. Back in the muggy category, we're not going to stay there forever, but it's going to be like that the next couple of days, and especially through tonight, which will help lead to some areas of fog developing. So looking at our future cast for fog, 
I'm thinking after midnight, say 2, 3 a.m., some fog starting to develop, visibility is starting to get reduced around sunrise tomorrow morning. Probably visibility is around a mile, maybe less than a mile in some locations. And just like today, we'll probably have the fog around through 9, 10 a.m. And then boom, off to a lot of sunshine by noon and mostly sunny through the afternoon. So fog is a new trend here that we're going to see for the next couple of mornings. But I think it's going to be a little more stubborn to burn off by Friday morning. So we had the low clouds and fog earlier today. Otherwise, nothing else to really see on the satellite and radar composite. Quiet across all of Texas. Big Blue H is the reason for that. The upper level high that presses down on us. It's stationed, it's really anchored just to the south of us, but it's deflecting all the clouds, all that moisture aloft up and around us. So sunny afternoons, and we're going to see that the next couple of days. Our next real change in the weather pattern is already happening in the Pacific Northwest. Good moisture with this upper disturbance, this dip in the upper level flow, that trough. It's giving some, uh, bringing some much needed moisture to parts of California, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, even Montana. Now, sometimes they take that moisture and energy and bring it down here and drop it over Texas. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see much from this system other than some cooler temperatures. So still warm, unseasonably warm through Friday, you know, about 10 degrees above average. Then with this upper disturbance that's going to develop a cold front, the cold front's going to move through town and not really stir things up too much in terms of rain chances, but definitely drop temperatures a little closer to average for this time of year. Let's talk about our rain chances here. So we'll just go into Friday or Saturday, excuse me, early Saturday morning, our next shot at rainfall and odds have been looking pretty slim of getting any decent rain. We'll start at 5 a.m. Go ahead, 6, 7, 8 a.m. You can see most of the rain closer to Dallas Fort Worth area around here. We could get a few little showers, but mainly isolated in nature. We're not looking at a whole lot in terms of rainfall from that cold front moving through. And actually, I think we'll have a decent amount of sunshine for most of our Saturday. As for tomorrow, we'll start the day with the fog 66 in the morning by noon. Bright sunshine, 80 degrees, 88 the high temperature. And you'll notice the humidity with our southeasterly breeze 5 to 10 and at times picking up to 15 miles per hour. Still well into the 80s on Friday. I just think we'll have a little extra cloud cover, a little more gray than blue on average because of the morning clouds and fog being a little more stubborn to burn off. Saturday morning, that shot at isolated showers, then sunny. And here's the thing, less humid for the weekend as well. Temperatures falling down into the upper 70s, near 80 for high Saturday and Sunday with lower humidity, some sunshine. I think it's shaping up to be a beautiful, beautiful weekend. One of those weekends we need to take advantage of this time of year because they're limited and they're numbered before the real heat oh, yeah. takes over. We're going to be complaining yeah. in a few months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Stay home, work safe does not mean you have to stay inside. Yes, yeah. go outside and have some lunch. You don't have to work backyard. Saturday, right? Yeah. There you go. All right. Thank you, Adam. In case you missed it, it's coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. President Trump issued today a disaster declaration for the state of Texas. Governor Greg Abbott actually made the announcement today saying it will help Texas better respond to the virus by opening up federal funding resources for public health and safety. As of this afternoon, there have been more than 13,200 tests administered across the state for coronavirus. More than 970 of them had a positive result and there have been 12 deaths reported. Here in Bear County, the number of positive cases as of yesterday was 69. Metro Health's last update shows one death, but we have learned of a second death just last night. We've also learned that the last group of cruise ship evacuees at JBSA Lackland have been released from their two-week quarantine. More than 380 Americans were housed at JBSA Lackland since February. The Department of Health and Human Services says all patients have been medically cleared. Stay home, work safe. Those orders have taken effect in the San Antonio area. And as of midnight last night, People across Bear County were supposed to be staying home unless 
They're running certain errands or working at some exempted businesses. If it comes to a time where there has to be some level of enforcement because people are not complying, we will make that decision as the executive branch of government here locally when that time comes. If you'd like to stay up to date with everything else related to COVID-19, we have a map tracking cases by county and a global map tra tracking the number of active and recovered cases and cases that have ended in death. Just go to ksat.com slash coronavirus. Other than some morning fog tomorrow, we'll have a fairly sunny day. 66 in the morning, upper 80s by the afternoon, and you'll notice the humidity. 87 on Friday. I think those morning clouds and morning fog will stick around a bit longer on Friday. Then a cold front hits early Saturday. With that, if we're lucky, we'll squeeze out a few showers, but don't get your hopes up. Otherwise, the weekend's looking pretty good. Sunny Saturday, right near 80, lower humidity as well through the weekend. And then we could see a few storms pop up by Monday, but even then it's only about a 30% chance. So pretty isolated. At least temperatures do take a drop and we get back a little closer to average by Sunday and into parts of next week. All right. Thank you, Adam. And thanks so much for watching the six o'clock news. We'll see you right back here on the night beat at 10. And of course, always online at nine.